And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Stephen Machat, near-death experiencer, entertainment icon, and a renowned music industry and showbiz attorney. Mr. Machat has represented Electric Light Orchestra, Genesis, Peter Gabriel, Phil Collins, Leonard Cohen, Snoop Dogg, and more. He's the author of five books, and today we'll be talking about his new book, Unraveling the Bible and More. Stephen, thank you for joining me today, and welcome. Hey, pleasure to be with you. basically be here with you. Well, Stephen, before we unravel the Bible, can you share with us your near-death experience and what happened to you? Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy story, like most are. But what happened was um, I was having trouble with my legs. I was in it. I used to run, run a lot, not a little, a lot, lot. And um, my legs gave out, and I didn't know why. So I thought, you know, something was going to happen to me, like Parkinson's or something. But it wasn't that. So I went to a back doctor and the back doctor told me that my discs are coming down. Right. So he said to me, you know, you're just going to take pain pills and I'm not taking pain pills. I love life. I don't need to be put to sleep or meditated out that way. I'll meditate this way. You know, I'll bring in the air, but I didn't want pills. So what I did is I found a doctor who fixed the Dallas Cowboys halfbacks back. When he was supposed to be out for the year, he got him back in three and a half weeks. So we researched him, we got him, we found him. He was coming to Florida and he told me he could fix my disc. He would basically seal the disc. He said, your disc, and I put these words in his mouth like the plaid and satin, you know, we have discs that keep us in balance. That's what the discs do for satin. And they're liquid, they're liquid gases. And when you deal with creation, Everything begins as a thought, then it becomes a gas. You know, it, it takes form. And then what happens is it, you know, it, in the form, it, beca- it takes liquid, a liquid form, a liquid form eternally, ET, or, or eternally or physically, you know, water, oxygen and water, if you want to go that way. And then it becomes a body. And so what he did was he told me he could heal the leaking. The leaking was important to heal because it was leaking on my nerves, which hurt my legs. And I'm a very active guy. So what happened is I let him do it. And then I went to Cuba afterwards, you know, it was three weeks later, we were getting ready to go to England. I have five albums that are coming out this year, which I was, I did finish. And I had my new book called um, Unraveling the Bible. So I'm in Cuba and I'm picking up the music from our band called the uh, Buena Vista Social Orchestra. I've got the orchestra. And I went down to pick up the music before I went to England. And when I'm picking up the music, and the, my bodyguard was the um, an ex-general from Cuba who used to work with the Russians and shoot people down in uh, Angola. I love stories, and I love people. And I will get stories out of you because I just, I like you. I like people. So anyway, I looked at him after I picked up the music and the pictures, and I'm like, my back's f***ed up to give my language. And he says to me, well, you know, what's the matter? I said, I can't walk. So we go back to my hotel and they put me on the bottom floor and they watched me all night. And I got up the next morning and I couldn't move. I went to the Cuban hospital. I thought they would do something there. I, I just couldn't move. What they did is they numbed me out so I could get back on the airplane. They got me back home and went home being Miami. And I came to join my wife, Debbie, who without her, I would not be here. So we, I got in Friday night, Saturday, I was sitting there living in denial because I was going to a place called San Antonio on Monday. I was having a 24 hour trip to San Antonio, which didn't happen. I had some business there. I know you're from there. And um, so Monday I'm in the hospital and I just, I, I don't know what happened. I just gave out. I couldn't bear it. What happened was the doctors um, told my wife, They said, you know, he probably won't make it, you know, and we'll we'll do the best we can. What happened is they found an abscess in my back that was huge and was right where the surgeon went in to basically heal the the disc. That's why I told you all that. He was trying to 
basically seal the disc so I would stop leaking. And behind those discs is exactly where this, um, I call it like the ooze, like Ninja Turtle ooze. Anyway, it was living on my back and it was going up my spine. And so I remember a few things and bingo, I was out, but I wasn't out, you know? And all I know is I'm watching and I believe all you and I are is a vibration. And what we are is we're a vibration that became a gas, we're a thought, we became a gas, we became a liquid, and we, cre we created the urge, the need, the desire to incarnate here in life. By the way, my books are written and I go through all this, I tell you how you form. But I believe we're music. And I believe you and I basically harmonize sort of together. And that's why we like each other. There are other people we don't like. And then we live in a world which tells you you're black, you're white, you're this or that. So all of a sudden they changed your instrument. So all of a sudden you're seeing something and you're not even giving that something you're seeing an opportunity to vibrate with you. You know, that's all we are. We're vibrations. We come to earth. We come to earth to make tunes together, make songs together, make love together, not to make hate together because then you're separate and you didn't need to be here. So anyway, I'm out. And here's why I just told that to you. All I know is I saw this. And I saw like an orange beating oven, which to me is where all the energy that you and I have comes from. It comes from the sun. And this, I'm looking at it and I'm not talking, but we're telecommunicating and it was bright. And it was something that I could have gone right into it if I wanted to. And I wrote a book called We've Got to Get Out of This Place. And when I did this, I have three books that called The Book of Earth. So we've got to get out of this place was book three of it. And in book three, I tell you about physical death. I tell you about reincarnation. I tell you about the Egyptian ascension. Basically, I go through the Egyptian book of the dead for ascension. I go through the Tibet book of the dead for uh, whatever you call it, reincarnation. And then I go into why you can't reincarnate. And then I go into the metaphysical explanation of who and what we are. And the only reason I know any of this is because I've studied mankind. I've studied the history. I've studied the empires that are now sand. I've studied them through the metaphysical elements of what I told you. It's all energy, you know? It's just like whenever a country goes bad, what they do is they get the people serious. And, Let's go. We have a new enemy. Let's go kill them. If you study the history of the world, that's all they do anytime something goes bad, right? So I'm looking and in my mind because. I'm like, I'm hearing this thing talk to me and I'm not talking to it, but we're like communicating. And I heard you could ascend. And then I, it's really weird because like wherever I'm tossing, I'm tossing around in space because it's without body. You're in a, you're in the ether, you're, you're eternal. And I'm tossing around and I saw a visual image of my wife sitting in the hospital or standing, basically crying. And I, I just said, no, I've got to go back. I, I've got to fix, fix this. Like I'm putting out rock and roll music. We don't have rock and roll music anymore. We have computer music, you know? I've got this book called Unraveling the Bible. It took me 50 years to write that Bible. There was no way I wasn't going to be here because that's information that may help us unite. You know, I don't tell people what to do, but I tell people we're all the same energy. We're all the same instruments. We were created by two parents who used their instruments in an act of love, made us as love. Each and every one of us came from love, except maybe an unfortunate case here or there. And so I, I had this experience where I, I went, I basically went to the internal engine, the matrix of life that I call the creator. And I was given another opportunity to come back on earth and figure out whatever my destiny was here. And, you know, it's like you could, you basically, we're visitors here on Earth, and we need to really understand what I just said. We're visitors here. We are 230 elements that never existed on Earth. So in my book, Unraveling the Bible, I tell you exactly what they are, where they came from. Let me recap with you. While you were outside of your body, you saw something that you described as an orange oven. Do you mean kind of like an orange orb? No, it, maybe. I'm wearing an orange shirt. Mm -hmm. But no, what it is, is it's like, if you and I could enter into the gases of the sun, I was back in the sun. 
Okay, so you were just like in an orange gaseous realm. Yeah. And would you consider that realm God because it was speaking to you and offering you a choice? It wasn't speaking to me, but it was vibrating with me. And remember, you and I speak a language, but all it is is vibrations. And I heard you could go or you could go back. By the way, when I went back, they told me I would never walk again. Well, that wasn't happening. And I sat in what I call a crib. And I was in, I was in this um, hospital bed. My hands were tied because I was going nuts. And they, you know, and it took me four days to even wake up again to see where I was. And then I woke up and I had my wife there. I had her daughter there. And I had three of my friends who live here and they're looking at me. And it, it, it was really heartening to see them there. But at the same time, I was just, I wasn't present in their physical sense. You know, I was just sitting there trying to figure out what kind of emotional ride did I just come back from? I was definitely someplace else. So they fixed my back, but they didn't know what would happen. But anyway, that was February 8th. Today is August 8th. So that's six months. I'm walking. I'm going to get on the airplane. I'm going back to England. I've got five bands. This band called The Gulls, your listeners should listen to. I could look at you and tell you you'd like it. You like ELO? Mm -hmm. I did the same thing. I was in England looking for idealists, people that dream. I dream. I'm a dreamer. You're a dreamer. You're getting people to share their dreams with you. All we are is we're just a dream that figured out how to come to life. When I worked with the Native American Indians, my friends flipped out, but I made I basically went into their lives and recorded their ceremonies and chants. And they would explain to me that they came from the beyond, beyond the sun. And I would sit there and I would just keep asking, what are you telling me? And I get it. Because what happens is we fall into a solar system, a solar system to be created. And all we are is a solar system as individuals. A solar system needs a heat force. Well, the sun will do that. And then what happens is that heat force could take your imagination and make your gas, make your liquid and make you a physical body. So if you study the solar system of Earth, you know, we've got the nine planets, I believe 10 planets, maybe even 11, you know, because at what point does the gas become a liquid that we count it? Like Pluto, well, where did Pluto come from? In these texts that I've read, you know, they say it came out of Mars on an explosion. Hmm. And there's these cuneiforms that have been all over Earth. And since I was a young boy, I grew up in the music business. And there was a band called The Kinks. I loved The Kinks. Mm -hmm. I loved Donovan, right? And my dad would have their management come to the house and I would sit and talk to him. I was, you know, I was young enough. I was 12, 13, 14. And I wouldn't stop talking to him, you know. I grew up with the Four Seasons. I used to go, I used to bet with with the Four Seasons. They taught me how to bet, you know. It's I've had a very nice life, you know. Let me ask you this, Stephen. After this NDE, did you notice that you had any gifts or abilities that could be considered psychic? No, but I've had it before. Okay, I the life I've lived. I, I, I am psychic. You know, anyone that knows me will tell you that. And it's, you know, I, I just could read you. I could read your mind. It's uh, the Alan Parsons songs. I could read you. I could study you. I feel your energy. I wrote a book. It's called the, you know, the highways of mankind. It's, I redid the history of earth and I did it through the eyes of two things. What happened is we create imperial governments and imperial religions and the history of mankind for 6,000 years is what? It's war. War and the resulting poverty and death, you know? And then what do you do? You get, you have to manage the war. And then what do you do? What, you know, who are we? What are we? So that's where I go with all this. It's, it's just, I, 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 I can read people I and mean, I've been studying it. I've done Kundalini energy. If you know Kundalini, mm -hmm. I studied with the sheiks. You know, you sit there and you start, pulling in energy, you could start, see, you see through the maze, because all we are is we're an illusion. And if you could just get to the energy of what's sitting in front of you, 
you could get through it. We're energy. That's what we are. Well, how did a showbiz attorney like you get into unraveling the Bible? So I started telling that to you. I, I became an attorney because to me, that's one of the weapons of economics. The law. Who made up the law? And the accounting for the law. So I studied accounting and law. I had my father's tutelage because he knew what I was and he knew what I would do. And I have the law as my background. So when I sit and meet with these people I call idolists, this, they're talking to a different type of character. Because, you know, you got the guy with the watches and he pulls it up. Which watch would you want to buy? Yeah. But with me, I could sit down with you. We could sit there and discuss where you're going with it. What energy do you want? Who's your climate? I could go, your climate being you. You're, which, who are you going to deal with and all this? And I, I could figure it out with you. And I've done it for over 50 years. But anyway, going back to what I told you about the kinks, they gave me a book. They came in and they said to me, the manager, he comes over, he says, you ask a lot of questions. You need to read this book. This book I called Sacred Knowledge. It's another one of my books. And um, so anyway, I said, okay, what is it? And he called it, you know, it was a book. It was Chariots of the Gods. Mm, yeah. And I read it. And then I found out that a lot of these British people that I was getting around be King Crimson. I don't know if you know King Crimson. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I ended up with Peter Gabriel, which was an obvious one. You know, and I had the original Genesis where Peter came out of. Phil yeah. Collins was never like this. He was he was the other type. But these are people that would get lost in thought. And they would try to figure and put it all together. And I would talk to him about this. And what I did is with Peter, I created Walmart, World of Music, Arts, and Dance, which is a festival in Bath. So anyway, I'm 23, 24 year old boy, and I'm looking at Bath, and I realized the Romans were here. What did, why, how did the Romans get here? And they built these baths that no longer work. And then you go downstairs from Bath, you end up in Glastonbury. What's Glastonbury? Well, Glastonbury is where Jesus' family came from. And I'm throwing things at you, and I spent my whole life researching what I'm telling you. Jesus' family came on his mother's side. They came from Glastonbury. What were they doing in Glastonbury? They were picking up the tin from Cornwall. What were they doing with the tin? They were putting it together with the people who were sailing back to the United States from Lake Superior, and they would melt it with the uh, copper and tin, and it becomes bronze. What did they use for bronze for? Well, they used it for weapons of mass destruction in those eras. And I'm like trying to figure it out. There's something much much bigger, much deeper here. And I wanted to know it. And I just kept hearing, Stephen, my internal, it's in the Bible. The Bible's not what people think. The Bible was written by beings who call themselves gods, and the world is Nephilim. They call themselves Nephilim, which we translated to gods. They were Nephilims. And when you read their scriptures, they tell you straight up they believe in a creator. And they believe they're doing the creator's work. And before they created mankind, they had a whole discussion on their planet Nibiru, which is one of the planets in our solar system, using the same gas, liquids, and um, other proteins that make up our body, right? And so our Earth bodies are made up of 20 uh, ingredients. You know, it's, you know, I'll read them to you. Every Earth body has these ingredients. So what happens is I just, I couldn't get out of what I just told you. I wanted to know it all. And I just kept going to it and going to it. Well, let me stop you for one second, because I thought what you said was amazing. And that is Mary, mother of Jesus, is from Glastonbury. Yep. And she eventually made her way to, to Jerusalem or to No, Bethlehem? it gets better. How does she it wind up better. in Israel? She got down there, but because her... Her, her father and her brother's family controlled the merchant ships that came in from England and would go down there. That was the major trading port. That's how they got to move around. Jesus moved around. If you study what we know about him. Hmm. Fascinating. It, it really is, right? Yeah. And that book is called Taking Jesus Off the Cross. Well, do you believe that Jesus eventually wound up in India and even perhaps as far as Japan? No. 
What I do believe is there's two sects. Okay, his real name was SSU. Okay, Sue. And you know, when I was a boy, my father represented a producer called Bob Johnston, who produced Johnny Cash. And he produced Johnny Cash, and they had a song called A Boy Named Sue. Yeah. And they kept trying to tell me that's what it meant. And I'm looking, I'm like, I don't get that. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't get it. And then many years later, I got it. So I'm answering you. SSU, okay? Wow. These come all from the Nathalem. So SSU, if I put an E there, it meant he went to the Egyptian school of sacred knowledge. If I put an I there, Izu, it meant he went to the Aryan, the Indian school of sacred knowledge. And then when you study my book, The Colonization of Earth and the Making of Mankind, called Unraveling the Bible, you will find out that in the film, when they created mankind, they created us as slaves and servants, but we had their ability. You know, our consciousness has seven abilities. What all of us have is we have the ability when we come, when we start, after, after our thought becomes something beyond the thought, what we do is we're a consciousness that can think. We're thought consciousness. So that means we have intelligence, right? Then we have an ego because we're a collective consciousness, but we have an ego, so we separate from the collective consciousness. Well, great, you separate. Who else separates? What do you think rain does in the cloud? They separate from the cloud. That's what we did. We separated from our collective consciousness. Now separated, we're able to feel, okay? And then we have a mind because we become aware of our six senses that we want to represent. And then we have knowledge. We're able to do action. We're able to, and then we're able to create a life force, which is what we did here on earth. And then all of us, all of us in our physical bodies have 20 metallic and non-metallic elements. And they're all from earth. And this is what makes us earthlings. And what I'm going to tell you in a second is how, it's fantastic. We have oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, calcium, iron, iodine, sodium, potassium, magnesium, copper, cobalt, fluorine, selenium, magnesium, moldy dome, nickel, and chromium. That's what's inside every one of our bodies. That's our physical body and the seven degrees of consciousness I told you. And where this all goes is, if you study our solar systems, these planets, some are wombs. I believe Mars is a womb. I, I know that there was life on Mars. It's in my books. And now, slowly, NASA's telling you what I know, because I'm not the only person that knows this. And what ha happened is, the age of Aquarius, without it being some new age crap, the age of Aquarius means we're able to communicate with each other. Never have we been able to communicate with each other as I do now. If this was still the 80s or the 90s, there's no way I'd be telling you what I know now. I would have been stuck on highways of man trying to figure out the answers. But then I, I figured out the answers. Man is following what they believe are the mandates from God written in the Bible. And that Bible is nothing, nothing but the king of Nibiru, his name was Anu, and his two sons, Anli, who became the Hebrew God, and Enki, who became the creator of mankind, the scientist, it's their diary. And what it is, is their diary. They lived, you and I live Earth years, okay? Each Earth year represents how long it takes for our Earth to go around the sun. We live in a car. This is our car body. That's what I learned when we were talking about me leaving my body. I was outside my car. I asked the energy if I could get back into the front seat. You know, and I said to him, I actually said to him, I'm going back. I, I, I've got to finish this because I really believe I have some answers and I understand something. It made me more humble than I've ever been, but I understand all I am is just an energy. And right now I've got a lot of energy and I'm just ready. I'm going to share it with you. And you, you could hear it, you could take it, and you could build on it. You could do whatever you want with it. Let but me I'm not the only person that says this. Let me see if we're on the same page. My definition of the Nephilim is they are the 
children of the fallen angels that mated with the human earth women. And that's what you, and then you got the Nephilim. Is that correct? Sort of. Gets better. Okay, you're not wrong. Okay, so in my book, Unraveling the Bible, and by the way, your listeners, if they buy it and they don't like it, I'll pay you back. Because it will open your eyes. You'll see everything. You'll see how all the wars started. You'll see the birth of all the religions. So then the film come here. So what they do is they have to create mankind. And I'm going to answer exactly what you asked me. Because you're right. This is what it says in the Bible that you read in the Bible. I think it's even in the Oxford Dictionary. But you, And they did exactly what you said they did. You know, after they created Earthlings, they started copulating with the women. And then the women in the film started copulating with the Earthlings. And they created demigods. Did you ever read the story of Gingamash? I'm familiar with it. I've heard it, but I haven't read it. It's the story of the demigod trying to find out how he could have eternal life. And it's not he's going to have eternal life. What it is is you and I get 72 Earth years. Okay? And... Maybe our bodies last to 120. That's Earth years. Then the film from Nibiru, they circle the sun. Each circle in Earth terms is 3,600 Earth years. So these people, if they live 70, 70 in the film years, or 72, which is average, if they live that long, and this is, we're in a mathematical toy. That's all we are. This is totally composed by the beat of a second. You know, everything's the beat. It's the big beat. It's the big machine out there. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they lived longer, and they called Nibiru heaven. That's where the word heaven comes from. And they talk about their gods. When they created mankind, they made mankind, just like it says in the Bible, in their image. And then what they did is they got mankind to be able to do different things things because they needed mankind according to the tablets to basically get in there and just rip apart the walls because the computer systems they had didn't work there they needed they needed our ability with our hands like their hands and they had a riot then the film who were called anakis the earth travelers they what they did is they um they had a riot and they decided they would make a new species and they had the technology to do it and all we're doing right now is we're catching up to them. You know, when when I read about NASA and they tell me about the asteroid, the astro belt, you know, you read it and all of a sudden they're talking about Psyche 19. That That's written in a, book, a tablet that's a little bit over 300,000 years old. They created mankind 300,000 years ago. They created us out of living organisms here that did not have the seven qualities I just told you, but they had the 20 physical characters, you know, and they had a different consciousness, not one that could think, have an intellect. You know, they, they just operate as a machine and they feed. So um, then the film, when they reproduced, they came down here and they reproduced and they made a demigod, half human, half the film. And those became the original rulers. And then what happened is 6,000 years ago, just like the Bible tells you, they created civilization. They didn't create the earth. They created what we call earthling civilization. And they gave our ancestors the rules and regulations. They gave them their law, their way of life. They had a king. It's the same thing. It's all in this book. And it's all in the tablets. And I didn't do all this. This was deciphered over, over I don't know, the last 200 years. What are the tablets that you're speaking of? They're the tablets that exist everywhere when you go into a museum. And they're written like this. And they go like this. They go down a line. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you read the Egyptian, whatever you want to call it, or the Iraqi or the Iranian, the cuneiforms. Oh, okay. You see them all over the place. And then what they did is they took cuneiform and they moved it like you told me to move the camera. They moved it 90 degrees so you could read it like this, which is better than reading it like this for us. And then they had it, you know, they used to write right to left. That's why they started doing it. And then they changed it and then they wrote left to right. And I, I, I devour this stuff. I devour this small information because it says so much. It tells you what you need to know. 
And so I've been very fortunate. I've been all over. I've studied with all the major religions in the world. I've even studied the So religion in Africa, which we call voodoo religion. Well, what is the voodoo religion? Well, they deal with spirits. Where do the spirits come from? They tell you it comes from the blood. Well, so does Christianity. They tell you to drink Jesus's blood. You become Jesus. And what's it with the blood? Well, the blood keeps you based here on earth. That's something that will stop you from traveling. You know, it's, I could go on and on and, you know, with your other listeners, with you, if you want to have another session, I'll go there. Well, before- because by asking me questions, you make me focus on what you need to know. And let's do it. Well, before we go there, when you start talking about the Anunnaki, I think some people will say that the Anunnaki created us to mine gold for them. Yes. Why? What's so important about gold? gold? Okay, so I told you that in the film we're from Nibiru, right? Mm -hmm. So the film are from Nibiru, the planet, and they call their space travelers Anakis, the ones that came to Earth. They came to Earth because their planet, as it orbited the suns, was leaking. Their, their planet was in case. Like our atmosphere covers us from top to bottom. And when, you know, I was lucky, I used to take the Concorde. We'd go up 60,000 feet. And when you got up that high, you would see the curvature of the Earth's atmosphere. So their atmosphere was leaking. And they discovered, or they wrote in the tablets, that gold was the chemical was the, was the metal that they could basically heat and make it a liquid and make it a gas. And so as a gas, then it would liquefy and they would be able to take the gold they found. They, they used Mars as support to take the gold from Earth to Mars and then shoot off back to Nibiru. And they were called the Anakis. In Mars, the people who worked, or the beings that worked in Mars were called the Iggies. And they were all from Nibiru. And so that's what was going on. That's exactly the truth. And what it is, is that I just tied the whole thing together. And because I love history, I love stories, mm -hmm. and I've lived everywhere. I, I could just see all the origins. Many years ago, I did a movie called Anaconda. Wow. I'm jumping around. But mm -hmm. Anyway, I did a movie called Anaconda, and I got stuck in Peru when the Japanese embassy got invaded and I guess it was 95, 96. And what happened was I didn't leave when the government told me to leave. I'm like, that. So I stayed here and I ended up with professors from Peru who took me to Machu Picchu, who took me down the Lake Titicaca, who took me up to um, the Condor Canyon, which is absolutely fantastic. I went to Arequipa and I started studying like, what is this? Where'd these rocks get from? And they told me it was Roslyn. Okay, well, what's Roslyn? I grew up in Roslyn. Well, Roslyn is a Masonic term today that means floating stone. They were able to lift stone. Change the gravity, you could lift stone. How did they buy the pyramids? How did they build them? Well, what's this blueprint that came out of a museum over there in a location called Nivra, whatever, N-I-V-E-H-U-H, over in Iraq? They found cylinders that showed you how they built the pyramids. Why did they build the pyramids there? Because that Delta River is where they could just latch them in further in the earth. You know, it's, I just, in that book, I give you seven, I give you the whole building of society, the whole building of everything. And ask me questions so you can focus me. Another guest and I talked about the, the story of Adam and Eve. And basically, in his opinion, they had already created us and it was like we were too powerful or something and they needed to kind of dumb us down or lower our abilities. And so that's what the story of Adam Eve is really about. Would you agree with that? No, but he's close. What they did is down in, it was in Africa. And by the way, you could look up in Zimbabwe if you play with your computer. And when they first put all the information on the computer, it was better because they didn't know what they were putting on because they had people working and just lifting everything to the computer. But then when people started discovering stuff, they're like, hey, wait a minute, hey, wait a minute. We don't need you to know that the Vatican created slavery in 1455 on a papal bull by Nicholas V. I made a copy of it. If you start looking for it now, 
good luck finding it, but they did, they created slavery. So um, with the African slave trade. So the down there in Africa, they, and the reason I just said that to you is look up Zimbabwe and you'll find that there were these, basically they could have been camps, they could have been laboratories. They found stuff there that was not created 4,000 years ago, it was not created 10,000 years ago. It was created a couple of hundred thousand years ago. Same time they were making mankind down there. So they made us in different degrees and different varieties, right? Mm -hmm. And what they did was they created them. And then what they did, they were only servants. And at first they couldn't even reproduce. So they had to reproduce. They had to make Eve, you know, Tiamat. They all had different names. I share the names with you in the book. But the first earthlings, you know, they had to make, they had to give the, the, the man a womb. That's a woman, a man with a womb, you know, and they created this and then they wanted a little bit more educated ones. So then they made what you and I call Adam and Eve, but it was Adape and Tiamat, right? And what they did is they were a little bit smarter. They were able to talk, they were able to see, you know, and then the serpent is Anki who created them, who told them they would do, you needed clothing. This is all true stuff. In the Garden of Eden, where's the Garden of Eden? That's where the Nephilim had their urban society in what we call the Middle East. They had an urban society there that was flourishing. You know, you go to Egypt and you discover that their society there was a couple hundred thousand years old. The pyramids are 13,000 years old, you know, and they were created under the sign of Leo, which is basically now. How do I know that? Because they put a sphinx there and they, they had the lion's head. They were very, very into astronomy and astrology. Well, and, then, you know, when we when we started our arts and sciences, they gave us the arts and sciences. It was math, it was science, it was astronomy, astrology, geography, music, everything we don't learn anymore. Well, in your opinion, what do you think the Holy Ghost is? The Holy Ghost is the sun. It's the energy that gives us all our energy. Mm. All right. And this, the father is you and me, right? With, with, a, with a child, with a child, the father is the son. And then where does the son get its energy? That's the Holy Ghost. It's the universe. What do you think about UFOs in the Bible? 100%. They were landing here. You know, inside their tablets, they tell you how it happened. I was with my son. And my son, that was the other supernatural event. He died and we had a record label together and it was electronic. And I had a band called Young Lean, L-E-A-N. And they were, I didn't know what they were doing. They were taking lean or whatever. And my son got caught up in this thing. And when he died, and I, I'm heavily, I got heavily involved in breathing exercise, Kundalini, the chic practices, which they do to get out of this dimension. And my son came and visited me. And he, he told me, he goes, look, Dad, I, 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 it's my fault. I did this. And he said to me, you know, just pick up your heart and know that I'll always take this ride with you for the rest of your life. I'm sorry. I screwed up. I didn't mean this to happen. So what I did is I never mourned. And I buried Baron. I didn't bury him, but I buried the parts, the 20 parts that I told you about. I took them to different places. And it blew his ashes out in New York, Miami, L.A., and London, my four cities. And the, that, that's what I did. Did he visit you in like a contact dream or while you were meditating? He came to me while I was meditating in my sleep. I, I meditate all day. Like when I talk to you, I'm also outside my body meditating. I am. I, I admit it. You know, sometimes you got to ground me. My wife grounds me because I'll go bye-bye. I could, that's why I get along with these musicians. You know, I go in there with them. We start talking about creation. It's fantastic. You know, I've got the band, the Gulls, that I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. So what happened was Baron came to me because he died on April 8th. And I didn't know it. And he died down here in Miami. And I was in New York. And I, I woke up and I was feeling horrible, horrible. And I go back to sleep. And I never feel horrible. I go back to sleep and he's there. I didn't know it was him. 
And he, he apologized the way I saw you. And what he was, was he was reproduced as a vibrational energy that you couldn't touch. You couldn't touch it. And the truth is people listening to this are going, no way. You could communicate with it. The, they're not dead. You know, if they want to communicate with you and you want to communicate with them, there's still a vibrating energy. I'm telling you, those seven things I told you, that's what we all are. We're here. We're sitting in a place, you know, the Catholics call it basically purgatory. You're sitting there waiting for an opportunity to reincarnate. And you want to reincarnate because you have some physical need that you can't let go of. That's karma. You know, you have a desire, you have a need, and you want to come back here and fix it. And all life here is, is this a bunch of us, all individual droplets, all of us with that same seven items, trying to live our dreams. And what we do is we're bumper cars. We bump into each other. You know, when I was in India and I'm, I ran on the streets and I'm in Mumbai and I, they had no traffic lights. And I was fascinated that weren't just nonstop car accidents, but they all knew everything was coming. And, I, you know, I couldn't really run because it was too crowded. I had to wait until after midnight. But all we are is energy. That's all we are. What do you think is the most controversial subject about the Bible that you write about in your book? The fact that you believe there's a sky god that you have to pray to. You have to kiss his feet. You have to go hate and kill other people. You then sit and submit to a government that taxes you. So you could live in this government when God's not getting any of that money, if you believe in God. And why would any creator sit and tell you you're a piece of shit? And if you prove to me you're more than that, you could come sit with me in heaven. No, we are all created in love, for love, and to share love. And this nonsense with that Bible telling you you can't do this, you can't do that. And this nonsense telling you the whole thing is insane. In the United States right now, we're about to have a civil war over religion. That's what this is. And we had a guy named Donald Trump who would do anything to get in office. And he brought back the Christian right quicker than they could get back there. Our Supreme Court now has five Supreme Court judges when our Constitution, our Bible, says that there has to be a separation of church in 1789 was the Vatican and the state, which is the government. They want to separate the imperial religions and the imperial governments. And here we are, we're right back there. That's it. I believe God is love. Love is God. God is love. Love is not, God is not control. It's not telling you you could go kill each other. You don't need to pray for, to God. You are an item of God. You come from that consciousness and you need to live a righteous life here. You, need, you know better than to steal. You know better than that. And if you had a community that would share, you know, everything with you, any necessity that we need to survive, I believe is a community asset. Anything that's for our ego, that's a business asset. But getting bread, getting food, giving people health care, what is the government here to do if not that? I, I don't get it. I ran for the United States Senate, and they thought, oh, my God, where did this one come from? And the issue they had with me is I make money. I'm an entrepreneur. I love it. It's a game for me, you know? And if I could win 73 nothing like one NFL championship was, I'd give everyone everything I don't need. I don't care. All I want to do is play the game with you, and I want you to be well enough that we can play again tomorrow. I don't want to beat you up so you can't play. I don't want to take advantage of you. I love people. And all I want to do, like I see people, I walk down the street, and if they, I, I actually walk up to them, tell them, smile. I tell them they're beautiful. You know, it's like when you started, when we started talking to each other across the universe, mm -hmm. what a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. Do you think your success is due to mostly hard work or do you actually have manifested some of it as well? I manifested everything. How? I see it. I want it. I'll go get it. And I believe the two purposes of life is to have freedom and to have happiness. You have freedom to do what you want and you're happy that you're able to do what you want. And that's the goal in life. And that's what I did. I, I just would not be bogged down. I didn't let debt get in my way because it would destroy you. You know, I just, 
I'm a free person that, you know, I've been successful. I get bored. I'll go learn. Like I would have these hits and then go disappear. I would, I would then go on my sabbaticals and study people. I've seriously been in over a hundred countries. I played. And when you go into a country and you go in with one of these big groups, right? Forget about it. You know, everyone's trying to get in there. You could talk to everyone. And then once they realize who you are, it's fantastic. You know, I made an album with them. Um, the Dalai Lama, I made an album with the communist Pope, which they never let me put out, which was pretty funny. We put his poetry to verse and we had top stars in 2001, two and three read the poetry and I put the world beat music under it. I'm, I'm the world beat expert because hmm. I deal with music from all over the planet. Who are some of the most spiritual artists that you've worked with? Well, obviously, it, it was the Indians that I worked with, but on another level, you know, like when I got into work with the Africans, they see images, they feel vibrations, they're raised to see vibrations. So, like when I would go on the road with them, I, I had so much fun because I would talk to them and they would talk to spirits right in front of me. And I said, how do you see it? How do you bring it in? You know, I'm doing this. Because if you basically, if you meditate like this and you pump your stomach in and out, you, you change the composition of your, your awareness. You open it up. They tell you it's the pituitary gland. No, the pituitary gland is like in your tub. It's how you stuff it. So you just got to open it up. Who else was very, I, I had a lot of them. You know, I got involved. I had crystal cord bowls. Do you know the crystal cord bowls? I don't. <laughs> So I meet these people and they come up to me and they're like, we were told to talk to you. I'm like, okay, let's talk. They said, and they asked me if I could help them put out music from the bowls. I said, what are you telling me? Well, the bowls make music. The bowls talk to you. So the next thing I know is because I was ready to be entertained. I went to Utah with them and I went into their, um, I called it the laboratory of the bowls, the temple. They bring me into this room. I said, oh, we're in the temple. They had a couple of hundred bowls up there. And they're basically, they cut the bowls. And if you go on top and you circle it, and it's got to be counterclockwise, the thing will sing to you. It will make noise. Go, Ooh. And I sat with all these practitioners who really believed they were speaking the higher power. So therefore, they were. And what the, I did is I looked at them. I, I'm like, screw it. Let's do it. So here I am, I have these top 10 records, right? One of the kings of payola in those days. And I really get fixed on this. So I make an album, it's called The Crystal Bowl Collection. And what I did is I went searching and I took the 26 nominees who bought their bowls, who had one song to leave to mankind with their energy they wanted to unleash from the crystal cord bowls. It was one of the most educational things I've done they tried to come with a straight jacket and tie me up. I sent the bowls to the radio stations and told the radio stations that this is the next thing. And um, that was it. I, you know, I left here and I went back to England where I sat and read and wrote my books and put out my books, Gods and Gangsters, and studied. I, I went to get clear. Because LA, you're not going to get clear. How has your own spiritual journey affected the artists that you've worked with? Good question. It helps them. Because I was very fortunate. If you don't agree with me, I don't take it personal. Because they see us like shoots and ladders. We're in different levels. And I'll just, first of all, they know if they're going to ask me, they know I'm going to give them an answer. I said, don't ask me any question ever that you don't want me to answer. You know, I'll share with you what I see and what I feel and we'll make it better. Mm. So that's what we did. I, oh, here's one for you. I am, um, I got bored. So one of my artists from the Bulls, I need music for a movie. So I call him up because I wanted him to play his flute. He says, I have something better for you. I go, what do you have better for me? He goes, I'm recording plants. I go, you're recording plants? So he says, yeah. And I said, 
I want to hear it. He goes, do you know what I'm doing? I said, all I can visualize is you're miking the noise that comes out of the soil and you're making the mic work so my ears could hear it. Exactly, that's what it is. So what I did is I recorded it. It's called The Singing Life of Plants by Stephen uh, Scully. And it's, it's fantastic because <laughs> plants speak to each other. They, they live a social community and they decide who can live and who can't live. Because, you know, when that tree grows up, you know, you got all these other plants under it and you get the tree top and you can't get the sunlight because you need the sunlight to become bigger. Have you ever witnessed a UFO? I thought I did once. And I don't know if I did, but we were, I was living in LA. I was on Sunset Boulevard, driving to my house in the Palisades. And I swear I saw something come up over the um, horizon and just like fly right overhead. And it came like, and then. Uh, and by the way, in, in this book, when they discuss how they fly in and out of our dimensions, I went to get the book so I could show it to you readers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all written here. It took me 50 years to write, to rewrite. This is my Dark Side of the Moon, my favorite Pink Floyd album. This is, it's, it's there. It's, I wrote it for mankind to live it's with your, it forever and ever longer. It's your magnum opus. Yeah. What's, but what, what they did is they talk, about, they talk about collapsing time because they tell you it's not linear. You can move through it when you move it. And I'm like, I, I would love, if I could do more, I'd love to sit with some of these scientists to see what they're telling me. I told you, I started telling you, I went to this temple with Baron in Egypt called Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. I went in there and they're telling me these things are 150,000, 180,000 years old. And I started believing them. They had a helicopter there. They had a submarine there. They had a tank there. You could look it up. I sat there. I saw it. Then they had in the wall, they cut it out where they had health so you could resurrect yourself. And on the wall, they had a Kundalini exercise. And my son looks at me and goes, Dad, I'll never make fun of you again. Because mm -hmm. they were doing the exercise right there. Because it's called the Sat Kriya. It will get you going. But yeah, I thought I saw a UFO, but I can't prove that. But I know that they write about the UFOs. I know they got here. I know there were landings on Mars. I know there were landings on the moon. And all you have to do is figure out how to get out of our atmosphere. You know, our atmosphere and out of our solar system. I noticed on the cover of your book is a pyramid, if not both pyramids or all three. All three. What is the purpose of those pyramids? The way they're structured. So what happened was they had the great flood. Okay, so what's the great flood? Yeah, what the caused great it? Flood, the great flood is when planet Nibiru came too close to Earth. And it cut right in between Mars and Earth. And what it did is, it's like being in an ocean, if you've ever been on a boat, and someone, you get awake. So when these planets are moving, they call that retrograde and retrograde, you know, the retrogrades. You're getting awake. You're getting different energy. Well, this one gave us some real energy. And what it did is it jarred the um, Antarctica's ice free. And Antarctica's ice was free, and it went running up Earth, right? And it ran all the way up into what today we call North America and Europe. And what happened was it destroyed the entire world that the, the film had with this. You know, it even ended up in the, the Andes Mountains, which is 13,000 feet high. It changed the composition of Earth for two feeded animals and other animals. So what happened was, they had to rebuild the towers because they needed towers basically to land the spaceships. So what this is, is it's the three towers and they're pointing towards a planet called Cyrus. And they, that's how they would navigate and know where to land on earth. And this is a Delta. That's the Delta. And it would withstand. I give you the whole explanation as I read it in the book or as I read the translations given to me by those that translated the cuneiforms in the book. What do you and they put it in Delta. Do you think Noah's Ark was a spaceship? No. Noah's Ark, according to what I read, it was the word Noah 
is the Babylonian word, which means come to a halt. Okay. His name was Zoroastra. Zoroastra was Enki's son. And what happened was he was his half son. And Anli, the Hebrew God, wanted him gone. He wanted everyone gone. They thought that the creator was upset and this planet coming by was going to destroy life as they knew it. And what happened was um, Enki told Zarustra to build a boat. And then it would know it. It would bring, it would come to a point where it could rest because they were going to get a lot of that. And you know what they tell you? They took two animals. Mm-hmm. No, they took seeds. They took the seeds they needed to recreate life. They took different, you know, they took male, females. They had seeds in the boat. You know, they had the whole things there. And yeah, I believe that story that I wrote in the book is 100% true. And that story I just told you about has similar stories all over our a world universe, a world. You know, they tell you about the big flood and this and that. You know, in some of these boats, if you go to Peru, you'll see some of these Egyptian boats there. And it's like, how did that get up here? You know, and it's all right, whatever. Stephen, after watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? Yeah, I've got the School of Sacred Knowledge, and you could communicate with me there. I like you. They could communicate with you, and you could find me. We could do it another time. We could get together and answer these questions. Mm -hmm. I want to give away this information. All I want to do, you don't need to believe everything I told you. It's like, you know, we all have different reasons and we disagree. You know, it's A or B. Well, maybe it's A through C. Maybe there's 26 choices or 360. I want you to realize that it's not A or B. And, you know, and then there's the light. Uh, Am I telling this to you to control you? Then there's the dark. You know, the dark is trying to control you. The light is, I'm sharing this with you. If we plant, you know, one I got thrown out of school in seventh grade. Because I told the teacher that one plus one is not always two. You know, it's like, how could you possibly say that? I mean, besides that, I heard it in a Moody Blues song on Ride My Seesaw. And then I had to think quick. And I said, well, there was Mama Mishat, Papa Mishat, and now there's six Mishats. So something went on there. And I didn't understand what I was really telling them then was if you create, you're not limited to just the two of you. If there's three of you could do eight things, you could do 164 things. All we could do is create together, make a better world. I believe our energy came down here. I call it a haven, not heaven, haven. A haven of health and happiness. We need to play with each other. We need to encourage people. If you want to go sit in the park, go to the park. You got to play your role. You got to help your community survive. You got to make sure you all eat. You got to make sure you all Well, the story I told you about me to begin this with, that bacteria, I don't care who you are. I'm a healthy guy. You know, these bugs get in you, goodbye. You know, we've got to protect ourselves. And then we live in a world where they give us fake food, genetically modified food. You know, I wrote a book. It's called The History of Viruses and Their Effects on Mankind Then and Now. Every time we change the composition of Mother Earth's womb, we get new diseases. And then I got so into it with COVID, I, st- I so pinpointed that. I ended up over in Cambridge with people that were doing the same thing I was doing. And we started discovering fungi. And a fungi, when it gets in the air, is a virus. A fungi is a building block. It's, it's both Shiva, if you know the Hindus, and it's also Vishnu. It builds and it destroys. It destroys so you can get the new. I would love comments. I'd love people to go buy my books. If people want to find out more about them, should they check out your website or go to Amazon? Well, you could go to Amazon and get them. But if you, Stephen Machat, S T E V E N M A C H A T dot com, you go there. And then I made a specific website for unraveling the Bible. You could go there and you just buy it on Amazon. Mm-hmm. You know, let me leave me a message, do whatever you want. And by the way, I'll be in Israel. They're putting me on Israeli TV to discuss what I just discussed with you. And my goal in life is if I could get those people in that area where all it all began and it did all begin there, that was their Eden. That was their Eden. You know, 
That's where Adam and Eve went. That's where they all went. That was where they built their urban communities. That's where it all started. All the hate, distrust, and killing of each other. It's the same way. I'm going on TV there, and they're going to ask me the same questions you are. And Jerusalem, the Jerusalem Post, they called it the best written book they've read on the alternative source of the Bible. Hmm. Well, I'm you, not alone. Do you have anything else that you're working on that you want us to know about? I, I'm going to break a couple of bands. I, it's so important to me. I want to break these bands. And then I'm doing a cartoon show called God's Game. Instead of, instead of God's dividing you, if you want to believe in the sky God, go for it. But build together. Sky God didn't ask you to go kill other gods. And if that sky God told you to go kill other, other beings, You've got the wrong God. So I'm trying to unite people. But my band, The Gulls, if you like rock, and remember I did Ozzy Osbourne, you could look it up before Sharon. And that's, I could give you rock and roll stories all day. Wow. Because I live it. We could but do a whole other podcast just on rock music. Rock music, soul music. I, mean, I I've done them all. Electronic music. You know, it's with my son, that electronic music. I've been around. I've truly been around. And I love it. And I love I could talk to you right now. I love I didn't listen to the energy telling me I can't survive. I can't walk again. I'm walking again. I'm going out there and I'm not stopping. I'm going to sing my song and my song is love. Love. Love one another. Love each other. And not in that type of way. No, love <laughs> each other. Build together. Become more than you are. Become everything you're meant to be. Go get it. Stephen, before we wrap it up, can you give us one last positive message? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I definitely can. Let me find this or I'll read it to you. My theme of life is freedom and happiness. Doing what you like is freedom. Liking what you do is happiness. That's your goal, my friends. Do what you like and Steve. like what you do. Stephen, thank you for that message, and thank you again for being my guest. No, thank you for having me. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara Podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the Join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.